Rihanna, Anjanu, Avon Lady, and now a Super Bowl performer. Wow. Rihanna stands out as having a deep understanding of how an artist can visually signal things about themselves to their fans. While she has often received this attention as a result of her on and off carpet style, her eight album covers spanning from 2005 to 2016 use visual cues to tell us things about herself and her music. Before we dive into each album cover individually, I want to point out two themes you see in Rihanna's album covers consistently. First, there's the eyes. Specifically, the choice to show them or to not, to cover the left eye, or the right eye. And then second is color. Rihanna loves her little black and white image and when she chooses to incorporate color, it's very deliberate and in your face. Keep this in mind as we look at each album cover individually. Let's begin with her first two projects, 2005's Music of the Sun and 2006's A Girl Like Me. It wasn't until Rihanna's third album, 2007's Good Girl Gone Bad, that she began to have more creative control over her appearance. Because of this, her first two album covers have more of a generic look to them. You can imagine any pop star of the early 2000s posing for the same photo. Mr. DJ Simon the replay. Rihanna was only 17 years old when her first album, Music of the Sun, was released. This album cover shows both of Rihanna's green eyes. As a matter of fact, it is the only one of her album covers to show both of her eyes in full color very clearly with nothing obscuring her vision. Us being able to look into her eyes speaks to her level of innocence at this time. She's a teenage girl from Barbados who moved to the United States at the tender age of 16 to live in the home of the producer that discovered her and work on her music uh, that, that's kind of crazy. Ain't that kind of crazy? I think um, Rihanna being a very beautiful, light-skinned, green-eyed woman um, played into the decision to highlight her eyes on this album cover as well as her next album cover, A Girl Like Me. All right, black people, uh, if you're not black, leave the room really quick. All the Caucasians to the back. Immediately. Immediately. Black people, let's, we're having a hard time right now. My people, let's, let's be honest with each other. Black people tend to prize having green eyes over any other eye color. Ah, 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 ah. Don't argue, you know it's true. Green eyes are the reason the black community are doing Punnett squares. That's high school biology. Doing Punnett squares with your brown eyed family members at the family functions, trying to figure out why they didn't get the green eyes, but they auntie, they cousin did. Mm, mm, mm. Let it go. Miss the DJ song by The title of the album, Music of the Sun, was clearly meant to emphasize Rihanna's Caribbean roots, which is a factor that differentiated her from her peers in the industry. This album cover leans mostly into gold and incorporates some pink and purple, which are colors you see when the sun is setting or rising, depending on how you look at it. Even though the sun was just rising in Rihanna's career. Given the album's mixed reviews, critics perhaps wondered if the sun would set early on her. <laughs> SOS, please someone help me. <sighs> Edit this video because I'm sure it's gonna take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Released less than a year after her first album, Music of the Sun, I can see why visually these two covers look quite similar. However, in speaking about the album, Rihanna pointed out how much she has matured since her first album's release. I read a quote where you said, I feel like I've grown five years in just one year. I definitely matured a lot. I grew a lot because it forced me to, because I have to think like a woman mm -hmm. and it calls for a lot of responsibility, so it therefore forced me to grow a lot in the past year. I feel like Music of the Sun was my introduction to everybody. Hey, I'm Rihanna, the girl from the Caribbean. And a girl like me is more telling you who is the girl from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. basically telling what it's like to be a girl like me. This album cover, like the last one, emphasizes the sun, which seems to be shining directly down on Rihanna from the right corner. But the sun isn't shining directly on her face, perhaps representing the desire to move away from the image that her her label created for her. Mm -hmm, me thinks. Def Jam introduced Rihanna to us with pop and R&B and reggae. But in A Girl Like Me, you start to get a taste for Rihanna's love of genre experimentation. On the song Kisses Don't Lie, which I would play for you, but I don't want YouTube to take my coins or my video. <laughs> oh, 
because again it took me a long time to edit this please watch it all the way through like comment subscribe anyways on the song kisses don't lie we can see her blend together rock and reggae music speaking to mtv in 2006 she said growing up in barbados i wasn't exposed to a lot of rock why i say bar barbados girl you're not bajan put the accent away Girl, put the accent away. Growing up in Barbados, I wasn't exposed to a lot of rock music. We really love reggae and soca music and hip hop, but when I moved to the United States last year, I was exposed to a lot of different types of music, rock being one of them, and I fell in love with it. Now, I love rock music, period. Rihanna would later become more well known for her willingness to subvert the expectations of the listener and experiment with genres like EDM and rock while still staying true to her roots. But first, she would have to fight her label for control of her sound and image to make that happen, which we'll get into more when we dive into her third album, Good Girl Gone Bad. But right now she's still good. But when she gets bad, oh, -ho! yeah. A Girl Like Me again places emphasis on her green eyes. This is the first album where one or more of her eyes begins to appear either semi or fully obscured. This can represent a transition to growing older and no longer being in that wide-eyed innocence of youth stage. This makes sense given that she was 17 when Music of the Sun was released and 18 when A Girl Like Me was released. By the time we get to her third album, Good Girl Gone Bad, you can't even look into Rihanna's eyes at all. The strap of her dress or top looks like white eyelet lace. The strap falling off is also a loss of innocence. On this album, Rihanna talks about things like cheating on her man on the song Unfaithful and having a bunch of haters on the song aptly titled Dem haters. Rihanna in later interviews even talks about some of her haters being from Barbados. This can be more symbolism for why the sun, which represents her Caribbean heritage, doesn't shine directly on her face anymore. Okay, okay, okay. She is also wearing a pearl necklace and y'all, why was I a little shook when I read about the, the meaning of the pearl? Hold on now. Now this quote comes from the pearlsource.com. It's not a pearlsource.com. It's the pearlsource.com so they know what they're talking about on there. According to history and the myths, pearls are symbolic of wisdom gained through experience. The gems are believed to offer protection as well as attract good luck and wealth. She says she matured with this album and she has a lot of haters so she needs protection from the haters so where is she going to get protection from? Pearls. Exactly. Exactly. You're picking up what I'm putting down. <laughs> Pearls also come from oysters and oyster shells. Oysters and oyster shells can be found in the water. And where can you find water around the Caribbean? Ooh, shook the tripod. I was so excited. I know it's really like, you know, it's really like I'm an encyclopedia or something. You know what I'm saying? It's like Encyclopedia Britannica or something, like for real, like. Now we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but in 2012, Rihanna released a song called Diamonds. Check out this quote I found about pearls and diamonds. The diamond is to the pearl as the sun is to the moon. The diamond, like a knight of old, brilliant and resistant, is the emblem of fearlessness and invincibility. The pearl, like a lady of old, pure and fair to look upon, is the emblem of modesty and purity. George Coons, thank you, George Coons, meteorologist, proving my point. Love when my point is proven. When Rihanna is the diamond, she represents fearlessness. Very on brand. When Rihanna is the pearl, she's more modest. From 2005 to 2006, she was firmly in her pearl era. But in 2007, things started to shift with the release of Good Girl Gone Bad. Good Girl Gone Bad and Good Girl Gone Bad Reloaded. We cannot talk about this album without talking about the haircut. The haircut that changed it all. The haircut that launched a thousand ships. The haircut that had hairdressers sick. Hark, what light through yonder window breaks. It is the east and this haircut is the sun. <laughs> So how did this haircut happen? The night before the shoot for the album cover, Ursula Stevens, celebrity hairstylist, hairstylist to the stars, trimmed Rihanna's hair and dyed it jet black. But one of the Def Jam label reps, you know, they were hovering around, supervising, 
So Ursula and Rihanna couldn't really go all the way there. They couldn't really do everything they wanted to do. So what they did is the next day, right before the photo shoot, Ursula cut Rihanna's hair even shorter since the label wasn't around to intervene. This haircut and color was something Rihanna had wanted to do since she was 14, but her mom wouldn't let her. And when the label saw the photos, they thought they were too edgy. Oopsie. Oh no, what are we gonna do? I guess we'll have to use the photos anyway. I wasn't 100% or even 75% in control of my image or sound. I said, if you guys keep this perfect image of me, people will never notice me. I kind of blended in. It was safe, the blonde curly hair. It was a formula. I didn't want to be like all the other artists. I wanted to stand out. This haircut successfully differentiated Rihanna from people she was being compared to. People like Beyonce, Tierra Marie, Sierra, Ashanti. More than any other star of the 2000s and the 2010s, Rihanna was adept at separating her eras of music through her beauty, namely her hairstyles. And we can see this on her album covers. The only person who I can think of who kind of does this now is Billie Eilish, but even Billie can't do it to the extent that Rihanna does simply because Billie is a white woman and black woman, we just have more, not even black women, black people, we just have more options in terms of hair. Braids, locks, afro, curly, straight, wavy, red, black, white and beige and uh. <laughs> this album cover shows how it's a delicate balance between what the label wants and who the artist is and what they want. Aside from her hair, this is also the first black and white album cover and Rihanna's eyes are hard to see. She's embracing the shadows rather than being in the sun, a la her first two album covers. The only color is her name in a teal blue. And the deluxe album, which was released in 2008, titled Good Girl Gone Bad Reloaded, also includes red. The turquoise represents the Caribbean waters, while the red represents passion, action, energy, sensuality, and strength. The bright color mixed with the black and white photo represents the boldness that Rihanna is known for. And given that this was her most rebellious project yet, that makes a lot of sense. And as I said before, Rihanna now loves rock music. Rock music was what associated to rebellion. Yes. Even the posture is vastly different from her first two albums. Instead of it being focused on her face, Rihanna leans back in a more edgy pose. Rihanna on the cover also wears a white preen dress. The white color is the good girl persona, but the dress style posture and haircut is the gone bad. Contrast this to the white lace and pose she wore on the A Girl Like Me cover. Very different. Going back to the hair. Her left eye is still covered while her right eye remains visible. Now spiritually, the right eye is associated to the sun while the left eye is associated to the moon. And if you recall on the first two album covers, we were really emphasizing that sun energy. The idea of one eye being solar and the other eye being lunar goes back to Egyptian teachings ancient Egyptian teachings, that is. Given that Rihanna has a tattoo of the Egyptian goddess Isis and the Egyptian queen Nefertiti, she obviously has some sort of connection there. But going back to the sun in her visible right eye, we see that this album still contains hints of a Caribbean influence, especially in the song Say It, which samples Flex by Mad Cobra, an early 90s dance hall record. However, the reggae influence on this album is still less compared to A Girl Like Me and Music of the Sun. Covering her eye is also a form of self-protection. Three albums in and two years since signing to her label, Rihanna has experienced some of the trials of fame and being in the music industry. As she sang on the song, Question Existing, sometimes I feel like I have it worse cause I always have to keep my guard up. Sorry, is the mic distracting? Sometimes I feel like I have it worse cause I have to always keep my guard up. I don't know who to trust. I don't know who wants to date me for who I am or who wants to be my friend for who I really am. Damn. ASMR, welcome to my channel. <laughs> Is this ASMR fluffing my hair? Can you hear that? Are my views going up? <laughs> who am I living for? Speaking of self-protection, let's move on to 2009's Rated R. Rated R was famously released nine months after Rihanna was assaulted by Chris Brown. It was a time in my life where I felt vulnerable and naked. I felt like the world was watching and that there was a spotlight on me. I felt confused. I knew I couldn't make a happy album. It was like, it's not the truth, it's not real. I know I won't feel like this forever, 
but this is how I feel right now. This is the first Rihanna album cover that was fully in black and white. Instead of using color to indicate boldness as was done on her previous album, Good Girl Gone Bad, the makeup and styling is used to create a more, oh snap, what is she about to say on this album? Look. We're closer to her face, showing that there's more vulnerability and honesty here than was on her previous album. And she actually contributed more to the songwriting on this album than she did on her last one. Lyrically, you get the sense that Rihanna is more focused on being honest, even if it looks ugly or striking. On the song Firebomb, she sings about toxic love with lyrics like, I just want to set you on fire so I won't have to burn alone, sexual control on Rude Boy, and lyrically relating love to murder and crime on songs like Russian Roulette. The purpose of this striking look was also again a form of self-protectiveness. In a 2011 British GQ interview, Rihanna says, It seemed aggressive, but it was more defensive. It was like putting up a guard wall, this tough image that people couldn't get past to me. You know that quote they tell you before the job interview, uh, dress for the part you want? Rihanna's sartorial choices here are a method of embodying her ideal self. In this era, she was wearing tops with exaggerated shoulders and standing on top of military tanks. This was a woman who was letting us know that she feels strong and she's taking up space despite her recent experiences. Perhaps the song Hard wasn't just a song, it was also a mantra. That I, 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 I'm so hard, yeah, 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 I'm so hard. Where them bloggers and where them bloggers and where they at, where they at, where they at. Simon Henwood, Rihanna's creative director for her Rated R era, cited two works as inspiration for the album cover. First was the 1971 film, The Omega Man, and Ursula K. Le Guin's 1971 science fiction novel, The Lathe of Heaven. The Omega Man was the second book to movie adaptation of the I Am Legend book, okay, by Richard Matheson. Yes, that I Am Legend that Will Smith also later starred in an adaptation of. In the movie, there's a plague, which was a little too relatable for, you know, you and me. So I didn't bother to watch the film. Don't wanna go through that trauma again. <laughs> oh. So then the main character thinks he's the last man left on earth, but turns out he's not. Dun, dun, dun. And then in the book, The Lathe of Heaven, the main character has the ability to alter reality with his dreams, which sounds like really great. And then when you read the synopsis on Wikipedia, it's not. It's not. Both works fall into the dystopian genre with a war being central to the plot. So yeah, it's not exactly giving uh, rainbows or butterflies like 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 the album cover all right let's move on to the eyes you already know i'm about to go in on the eyes the left eye which is uncovered has a more feline look with the eyeliner so i'm really getting cats cats have nine lies symbolizing rihanna's endurance in the face of difficult times rihanna also plays in different genres latin pop rock and dance hall to name a few and she has also reinvented herself before although to her she's probably just being herself but for us we were like oh good girl gone bad what what happened here cats are also nocturnal so they can see in the dark and they're associated with the dark and rihanna is saying some dark things on this album cats are also revered in egypt we already we already got into the egypt rihanna connection you you know what I'm saying? The tattoos. Right. You remember? It was five minutes ago, literally. As for the eyeliner, was it an early premonition of Rihanna becoming a cosmetics mogul? Maybe. Perhaps. But probably not. Yeah, you're, you're right. But ancient Egyptians did use coal around their eyes to enhance beauty, to show religious devotion, and to protect themselves from the evil eye. As a famous person, Rihanna has a lot of people who don't like her. And this was also a very vulnerable time of her life. Her right eye is covered by her hand. The right eye is the sun masculine energy. The left eye is the lunar moon energy, feminine energy. The left eye being shown shows that this is emotionally her most dark album yet. After all, when the moon is out, it is dark outside. This album is an expression of all those feelings that I went through in the last eight months, just different emotions. All of it isn't angry, all of it isn't dark and sad because I didn't go through that the whole time. That was part of it. It was really a roller coaster and you get that when you're listening to the album. Emotions weren't all dark because remember early on in her career, she was associated with the sun and the moon's light is really just a reflection of the sun, right? It's giving astronomy. It's giving Neil deGrasse Tyson a little bit. 
Compared to the imagery of the first two albums, this album cover doesn't even look like it was for the same artist. Rihanna is leaning in more to that rebel trope. In her earlier albums, the rock influence was creeping in, but it is very obvious here in Rated R. She even goes as far to proclaim that she is a rock star on the song Rockstar 101, while Slash, Slash from Guns N' Roses is playing guitar in the background. Now on Good Girl Gone Bad, Rihanna had a song called Shut Up and Drive, which had a little rock influence, a rock, okay, a rock, and Def Jam, yeah, they weren't really feeling that. They didn't want that song on the album. Carl Sturkin, one of the producers on the song 2007 Shut Up and Drive, even went so far as to say the song did come out, but the story of how it almost didn't come out and almost wasn't a single is a book. More drama than Game of Thrones. However, clearly on Rated R, Def Jam trusted more that the rock sound and less of that innocent girl imagery was going to do well if Rihanna was the one doing it. In any case, Rihanna's uneditedness was what helped her maintain her Rihanna reign across eight albums. So, um, I look a little different. Uh, <laughs> if it seems like some time has passed between the last clip and this clip, your powers of observation are iconic. Yeah. Yeah, I think you should perform at the Super Bowl next year. I don't know, I was really trying to give like Rihanna out to lunch. You know what I mean? Rihanna going to the post office on a Tuesday afternoon in LA. That's really what I was trying to give with this fit. Yeah. Okay, let's get back into the video. What can we expect from the album? Overall, I would say the album is the most true Rihanna album in terms of the sound and the energy and the look, the vibe of it, the lyrics, the, the West Indian twang in there. Everything about it is just tailored to me and nobody else could have done any of those songs. While still promoting Rated R, Rihanna said, Rated R, I love the sound of it in terms of the bass. I really like the bottom, the grime of it. But if I were to combine that with more energetic, up-tempo pop records, then I think that will be a happy marriage. And that's where we'll probably go next. 2010's Loud was the answer. It tonally shifted in the opposite direction of Rated R, utilizing bright colors, chiefly red, instead of black and white. This album cover visually also seemed to be a sort of middle ground between albums one and two and albums three and four. It included color, which was used in the first two albums, but like albums three and four, it was less generic and more true to Rihanna's personal style. This is another album where we can't talk about the album without talking about the hair. Rihanna reflected the mood of the album with her bright red hair. The music was also upbeat and exuberant. Ironically, although the album is called Loud, her facial expression on the cover is very calm and serene. That is zen. Although to be fair, she does have a song called California King Bed on here, which sounds very relaxing. It also sounds very expensive. Did Rihanna just call me bro? <gasps> There's apartments in New York City that are the size of a California king bed. You know what I'm saying? It's giving George Jefferson, it's giving moving on up to the east side, to the deluxe apartment in the sky high, you know what I mean? This again is a representation of her inner rebelliousness. Not her calling me broke. Um, the, the, the whole contrast between the title and, and the facial expression, that's the rebelliousness. When it comes to fashion, Rihanna once said, I always like something that's a little off, so it's not just typical or expected. What's more unexpected than looking serene on an album called Loud? This is also reflected in the music itself. The song Cheers, Drink to That, unexpectedly uses an Avril Lavigne sample, almost making Avril's voice sound like an instrument. Do y'all hear that, that, the cops in the background? They're coming for me. The song SNM on the surface is about, well, you, you, you know, you know what it's, you know what it's about. I don't think we need to get into it. It's about, you know, the birds and the bees and the chains and the whips. But the music video unexpectedly shows that the song is also a metaphor for the nasty things the media has said about her. There's also something very feminine and soft about this album cover. The choice to have her eyes closed, highlight the eyelashes, and add a red lip adds a mysterious sensuality 
to the whole thing. Songs like California King Bed and Skin are more sensual soft than songs like Only Girl in the World. This shows Rihanna's duality. Her fun of beat side is in the album title and in her hair color. And then the mood of the ballads on this album is more reflected in the styling, right? So the eyelashes and the makeup and all that. You can also see her Rebel Fleur tattoo on her neck. This means Rebel Flower, two words that unexpectedly go together and perfectly describe the mood of this album. Making rebellious choices while still maintaining a softness. The rebel from Rated R that sang songs like Hard is still there, but she's ready to have fun. She's ready to have a good time. She likes dresses and running through meadows, but she's ready to put on the army fatigues at any point. Make no mistake, as we heard on the song, Man Down. This was the return of the R logo from the Rated R album cover. The R has words, which I think are song lyrics and titles written within it in small fine print. And the pointy edges have an edgy look to it. The pointy edges have an edgy look to them. Yep, those words just came out of my mouth. Speaking of mouths, Rihanna plays into the title of this album by drawing attention to her mouth, both on the deluxe and standard editions of the cover. On the standard album cover, Rihanna, Rihanna, I'm sorry, we're supposed to be saying her name correctly. I'm trying. On the standard album cover, Rihanna is licking her red lips. Now look, if you listen to this album, Rihanna is really talking her, you know what I'm saying? Talking that talk. The parental advisory sticker talk. You, you know the talk. All right, in my Wendy Williams accent, talking that talk. Clap once if you think she's talking that talk. Clap if you care. <laughs> clap, if you, clap if you care. Songs include cockiness, birthday cake, rock me out, watch and learn. What are we watching and learning about, Rihanna? She's not trying to teach us about our ABCs, let's just put it that way. She's embodying that femme fatale desire archetype. On the deluxe album cover, smoke is coming out of her mouth, probably in reference to, to a certain uh, recreational activity if you're picking up what I'm putting down. This cover also has a similar setup to the A Girl Like Me album cover. However, one album has a more wide-eyed, innocent Rihanna, but this album cover, the eyes here tell a different story. Five years later, this is the expression of a more mature woman. Instead of coyly pulling her dress or shirt strap up, there are no clothes visible and there's smoke coming out of her mouth. The tattoo that says never a failure, always a lesson, emphasizes that she's a more experienced person. The makeup is also a lot simpler on this deluxe album cover than it is on Rated R. As a matter of fact, the deluxe album cover is probably the most pared down we have seen Rihanna look on the covers of any of her albums. She just looks a very unbothered, very uh, hi, I'm here casually arriving to some outdoor music festival in some desert where one of my favorite recreational activities is legal. Or not, or not legal. I don't, I'm not judging, what's your business? Several of the songs on the album are very anthemic. You can imagine people yelling the chorus together at the club or at the outdoor music festival, like we were saying before. Songs like Where Have You Been and We Found Love, which both have that EDM influence. This album cover was shot by Ellen Von Unworth, who also did the Rated R cover. Uh, so that explains some of the similarities visually there. On her hand, Rihanna wears some statement rings on both covers. She looks like she's wearing leather on Rated R, but here this looks more like camouflage, uh, a print that would have fit right in with the styling from the Rated R era. Her hand is on top of her head instead of covering her right eye. However, her hair still partially covers the eye, almost as if she's letting us in, but not too much. That need for self-protection is still there. We really see that in the music video for We Found Love, which depicts a love that is filled with some high highs and some toxic lows. Let's move on to 2012's Unapologetic. Ah yes, the Diamonds era. 2012's Unapologetic. 
Rihanna at this point has established herself as a fashion icon. Her appearance has always been a deep part of her brand and her appeal. Choosing to not wear anything on the cover and having her hair at its shortest is a metaphorical way of exposing herself to the world unapologetically. However, having one eye covered still shows that as unapologetic as she is, there are parts of her we do not have access to. As L.A. Reid once said in a Vogue 2011 interview, she became a star before she became an adult. Her nature is to protect herself. This sentiment is also echoed on the song Half of Me, which was included on the deluxe version of this album. On the song, she says, yeah, this is the life I live and that's just the half of it. Yeah, you saw the half of it. Peter Berg, who directed Rihanna in the 2012 film Battleship, spoke to Vogue about her. He was initially intrigued by her video persona. But when you meet her, there's absolutely no resemblance to the sexy super diva that you see in the videos. It's a complete act, in my opinion. I am not saying she's not a very sexy girl, but there's so much more to her than that. She is clearly playing around with the character. Okay, Peter. This echoes the theme of self-protectiveness we explored in previous album covers. Rihanna the persona protects parts of Rihanna the person. Alliteration. The words on the unapologetic album cover echoes themes that are in the music. Themes like celebration and love, as well as some heavier topics. Some of these have an obvious meaning, like hashtag Navy. Navy is the name of Rihanna's fan base, and the hashtag is a reminder of a time when she was more active on social media. But other words have a more deep meaning. Let's start with side effects, the only word or phrase written in black. My favorite color, <laughs> black. We already know from songs like 2007's Rehab that Rihanna has equated love or issues in love with addiction and drugs. In the context of unapologetic, this could be describing the side effects of fame, love, or just life in general. For example, there are several songs on this album that utilize the word numb, which is sometimes a side effect of medications or treatments. The song titled Numb is about being numb to what people have to say about you, while What Now is about being numb to your emotions because outwardly you're displaying one thing while inside you feel something else. Despite these side effects, the majority of the words written on the cover are positive. On Love Without Tragedy, Mother Mary, the most underrated song on the album. Who said that? Who said that? Oh my God. Rihanna asks, what's love without tragedy? And then later says to God, I'll be a star. You keep directing me. This is a reference to faith, which is placed right above the ISIS tattoo that Rihanna got in honor of her grandmother. This was Rihanna's seventh album and she proudly included hashtag R7 and seven on the album cover. In numerology, the number seven represents spirituality and logic as well as secretiveness and the search for truth. She often asks why and how on this album. Why won't you cry on the song, Get It Over With? How was I to know that my love was delusional on the song, Lost in Paradise? She's imperfect and doesn't have all the answers, but the search for truth continues. Seven is also associated with the signs Pisces and Libra. And you know what, I hate to say it, but delusion and Pisces go hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Not that I'm judging you because I am very delusional. I, I delusion is my middle name. I daydream all the time. Daydream and delusion are like sisters, not twins. You know, like your, like your eyebrows, like my eyebrows. Like your eyebrows, it sounded like I was coming for your eyebrows and how uneven they look. Not that they are, because I don't know. I don't know what you look like. I'm just, I'm just saying that everyone's eyebrows are not perfectly even, but so you didn't need to take it that way. I didn't mean it like that. Okay, I think, yeah. What? <laughs> Speaking of delusion, let's talk about love. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Love is the only word covering Rihanna's face and her left eye, perhaps signifying that love makes you blind. Oh my God. Or perhaps Rihanna looks at the world through the lens of love. Prop, that's, yeah, that's probably it. That's probably it. Now let's talk about the word censored, which is at the base of her throat. In August, 2012, Rihanna was dropped as the face of the Nivea brand because of her inappropriate behavior. If you're not familiar with Nivea, it is, it's moisturizer, babes. It's lotion. This was pre-Fenty Beauty, you know what I mean? This is when Rihanna was doing things for other brands instead of creating her own brands, maybe. Stefan Heidenreich, who uh, was in charge of Nivea's parent company, said the following. The advert starring Rihanna was a no-go. I do not understand how to bring the core brand of Nivea in conjunction with Rihanna. Nivea is a company which stands for trust, family, 
and reliability. First of all, this is 2012. Stefan, this woman is releasing an album every year, like clockwork. If that's not reliable, I don't know what is. Now see, if he said that in 2013, you know what I'm saying, which, which, which is when we got nothing, we didn't get an album in 2013, then I would've been like, okay. Tug, tugged on her wig with that one, rude, but I guess she's not reliable anymore because she's taking a break. Technically the schedule got thrown off, so I guess you got a point if you really think about it. Anyways, uh, what inappropriate behavior had Rihanna been displaying at this time? Well, um, a few months earlier, she posted a photo of herself sitting on her bodyguard's shoulder, uh, shoulders, not just one shoulder. Ooh, that would be kind of, I don't think anybody's shoulder can handle the weight of one per, like one shoulder. I mean, I guess you can if you're really strong, where you can like sling a person. Wow. Let's get back on topic. Let's bring it back. Uh, a few months earlier, she posted a photo of herself sitting on her bodyguard's shoulders at Coachella, rolling a, yeah, on his bald head. Rolling, not dice, not dice, something else. Some, mm -mm. Look it up, look it up yourself if you don't know. You're not picking up what I'm putting down, look it up. Google is free, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. But I mean, she looked moisturized while she was doing it, so clearly the product is working on her skin, so, <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> but yeah, she was doing some other stuff, I guess, on social media, whatever, I don't know. If you if you saw it, you saw it, and if you didn't, look it up. Um, <laughs> I'm half joking. I think she's just being funny with the censored around her throat. I mean, if 2012 Rihanna was censored, what does uncensored Rihanna look like? You know what I mean? Or, wait a minute now. Or given that this was her last album with her label Def Jam, which she signed to when she was only 16, maybe that was her way of saying that the label tried to control or censor her for the last time. Hmm. But you know, that's just a guess. I don't know. Ooh, okay. Let's go ahead and do Rihanna's 2013 album. Huh? Oh, there was no 2013 album? Okay. That's all right. We love a little self-care queen. She took her a little break. Uh, 2014? 2014 album. Let's do 2014, baby. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Anti, Anti had a few firsts. Uh, first of all, it was Rihanna's first album in four years. Like she waited until the next leap year. She waited until the next election year to record, to release. Okay, all right. Before, as you know, you know, Rihanna used to release one album a year. Can you believe there are kids who have been born who they don't even know what that's like? You know what I mean? They don't even, they don't even, they don't even have that experience. That's crazy. This is also the first album cover that's not just a picture of Rihanna. Instead, she commissioned Israeli artist Roy Natchum to do the cover. Looking at Natchum's other works, this collaboration is in line with previous themes we've seen on Rihanna's album covers. He often uses a child with a crown covering their eyes in his work. As we've said before, Rihanna with the eyes, it's a thing. And with this being Rihanna's first album since leaving her label Def Jam in 2014, creating her own imprint, Westbury Road Entertainment under Jay-Z's Rock Nation and acquiring all her masters, having an image of a child on the cover fits. She had more creative freedom with Anti than she ever had before. And no one embodies creative freedom more than children who have not been taught anything self-limiting yet. Wow, this got dark. Did I lie though? You know it's true. Does that depress you? When asked to describe the meaning of the cover art, Natchum explained. It depicts a young girl with a gold crown covering her eyes and a black balloon strung tightly to her wrist, painted in multiple intersecting views, expressing that the truth is in the eye of the beholder. The child whose vision is obscured by a crown represents man's blindness caused by displaced values and desire, while the balloon embodies the possibility of escape and signifies the human need to transcend physical reality. 
Okay, Roy. All right. You spelled it out for me right there. Thank you. All right, video's done. I guess since he explained it, I guess I don't have to. Just kidding, the video's not over. Okay. So yeah, everything he said, plus what I'm about to tell you about the cover. It's law. Take it as truth. Probably. Combining the innocence of a child with a bold and powerful red is very striking. This shows that although Rihanna's anti would sonically stand apart from her other albums and signify a rebirth of sorts, the boldness that we have come to expect is still here. But less restrained without the need to fit the pop mold that Rihanna had created for herself. On the first track, Consideration, she says, I came blood running from Neverland. That's such a scissor delivery. Like, you can tell she wrote it because that is such a... Oh my God. I'm done with you. You're fired. Just loud. On the first track titled Consideration, she says, I got to do things my own way, darling. And she also says, I came fluttering in from Neverland. AKA the place where you can be a child forever. Child, child, child. She's approaching her sound with fresh eyes, the eyes of her inner child. Rihanna in October of 2015 released an image on Instagram with the definition of the word anti. A person who is opposed to a particular policy, activity, or idea. In her collaboration with Roy Natrum, Rihanna has changed the history of album art by continuing to follow her own instincts, her work strives to make an impact, by doing the very antithesis of what the public expects. The cover art also includes Braille poetry, which Natchum often uses in his work as a way of commenting on human perception and allowing blind people to interact with his art. The poem in Braille was written by the poet Chloe Mitchell and it reads, I sometimes fear that I am misunderstood. It is simply because what I wanna say, what I need to say, won't be heard. Heard in a way I so rightfully deserve. What I choose to say is of so much substance that people just won't understand the depth of my message. So my voice is not my weakness. It is the opposite of what others are afraid of. I stared at this poem for a hot minute. <laughs> um, it's not on Spark Notes, you guys. Not that I checked because that's so high school. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, I had to analyze it on my own. The poem has this theme of having your senses blocked off or misinterpreted, whether it's your voice, your eyes, or your hearing. On the album, the crown covers her eyes and ears, but her mouth is still free to say whatever. In a way, she is detached from the outside world because her senses are blocked off. This is a metaphor for being introspective and going within to search for the truth. On the song, Never Ending, Rihanna sings, Ghost in the Mirror. I knew your face once, but now it's unclear. And I can't feel my body now. I separate from here and now. The poem is also about not compromising on who you are despite the repercussions and realizing that your weakness or what you thought was your weakness is actually your strength. Instead of looking for radio hits, Rihanna chose the music she felt only she could make without compromising for the charts. She had to find out what she could sound like without these limitations. Not only was the music an act of true self-expression, but the album cover art was too. The bang, not the bang. Oh, 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 you see how I'm covering my eyes to show that I'm letting you in, but not too, too much. You know what I mean? Just like Rihanna. Well, girls, I'm, I'm off. I gotta go edit this video, which is probably 40 minutes long. Should I go get a bag? Let me go get a bag. I'm really, it's really, it's really giving Rihanna is going to Giorgio Baldi for, um, whatever they serve at Giorgio Baldi girl. I don't know. Okay, let's go with the cow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Babe. Is it giving? 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 Huh? No. Put the bag back. Put the bag back. Ah. I think I need to go to brunch. What time is it? 8 p.m. Okay. Next weekend. <laughs> Um, oh, I guess I should give you a conclusion. In conclusion, as I said before, part of why Rihanna is so prolific is because of the visuals, is because of the look, 
the looks. Someone who is so expressive in what she wears. You know, walking down the streets, you know what I'm saying, on a Tuesday. And on the red carpet is going to put that type of energy and thought into the album covers. And so we, we just had to get into it today. Look, I was trying to give, you know, if I'm going to change my outfit. I was trying to give Rihanna. Oh my God, shut up. That was scary. <laughs> Girl, I I own you, not the other way around. Um, don't tell me what to do. Okay.